Hi, Shay Given here. You're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the final word from the game between Wales and Republic of Ireland. 1-0 defeat at the Aviva Stadium. Where do we go from here? Uh, I'm joined by Tiernan and his dad, Shane. You may have seen Tiernan uh, gave a brilliant reaction after the game last night, which was quite popular actually online, and uh, the Daily Star even got in touch with him this evening and uh, got a little interview with him as well. How was that? Well, he just asked me about uh, who, who I think uh, should take over if Martin O'Neill um, steps down and... Don't, don't tell them who it is. You just let them read your, your interview, yeah? I enjoyed the chat with the journalist and you can all read in the paper tomorrow when it comes out. So there you go, that's the Irish Daily Star? Uh, yeah, correct. Oh, there we go. Well anyway, um, we'll get into terms of the lineup because for me it, it boggled my mind. Obviously a column of doubt it was out because he, apparently he fell ill against um, the Danes. I think he came off at half time. But uh, so I was Christie in midfield again. He got man of the match to the right but you know where are we going with this? I don't know what the story is with him playing in centre mid. I think I like when he runs down the wing. He gets some nice passes and some good balls in the box. And yeah, sometimes he gets some nice goals from that for Fulham and sometimes for Ireland. But I don't know. Maybe he's experiencing something. But you do that in friendlies. You don't do it in big games against the likes of Denmark and Wales. Yeah, well, it's like if you look around, like obviously Randolph and goal, that's a given. Then the back three, I didn't really have any issues with that. And then the wing backs, I was a bit, I was a bit suspicious about McLean at left wing back again. And Stevens actually plays there; it's his natural position. Mm. But for me, it it always seems to be a case of constantly trying to accommodate James McLean. Martin O'Neill seems to be constantly trying to accommodate, and I love McLean, and he gives it his all. For, you know, for the cause, and I think everyone loves his passion. There's no, there's no denying it. But Ender Stevens plays that position week in, week out for his, uh, mm. for his club. He knows that position inside out. The same as Doherty on on the right side. But for me, he he almost restricted Doherty from playing. Yeah, I think uh, you didn't get to see much of Doherty last night. Like uh, sometimes I even forgot he was on the pitch. Um, I think. Uh, he's trying stuff out, but as I said, you don't do that in big games. And um, I didn't really know what the story was with him uh, doing that. And like, you need Doherty playing uh, as one of the main men because he's seen what he was doing with Crystal Palace uh, against Crystal Palace with Wolves uh, when he got man the match that got him the player of the month in the Premier League. They. That was the game he scored in, wasn't it? Yeah, they need him uh, creating chances up the wing, defending well, and you need him to be one of the main men in the pitch. Yeah, definitely. But the, the thing O'Neill came out again and said was that he was trying to protect him by putting Cyrus Christie there. Like, for me, he, he's mm. the Premier League pre player, and he does not need protection. I was looking at him a lot of times last night, and he was making a lot of runs, and they were just not getting seen by anyone. Mm. But uh, well, we're gonna we'll, we'll figure out the rest of the midfield then. If we had it was Hendrick and who was the other player we had in midfield then? Harry with him? Harry Arthur. Mm. Um, two Premier League midfielders. Well, we had three in the end, but one was a right back playing centre mid. But if I'm looking at that as a centre mid, I'm Conor Horan, I'm Alan Brown, I'm Sean Williams. I'm thinking. Or Moyler. Or Moyler, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm thinking, what what have I got to do? Mm. To, to get in there and play my position, you you imagine, like, well, we had well who we had up front, we had O'Brien and Robinson. Mm -hmm. Okay, but as as, as <coughs> I'm saying, you know, you shouldn't really be trying new things. I don't mind it up that end because we we're missing a goal scorer. It's kind of a chance for someone, you know, maybe they might get that little spur because it's, you know this is my chance and I, mm -hmm. I try and score. Yeah. So I get that. That was that was fair enough. And Robinson's been a really you know bright spark. That was a welcome since. change up front. You know, yeah. I still wouldn't have minded to see Long and Robinson. You know, obviously for whatever reason Long didn't appear until later on in the game, but um, I would have had Long up with Robinson initially rather than having O'Brien up there at the time. O'Brien didn't do too bad, but I still would have rather seen Long up there with with Robinson. Uh, I thought Arthur. I don't know what you think, Tiernan. I thought Arthur looked very nervous on the ball every time. Yeah, he didn't look fully fit, and uh, 
he gave way a few fouls because yeah, what you said, he looked nervous and uh, he kept losing the ball. I don't know what was wrong. He looked edgy or something on the ball anytime. He looked really nervous anytime the ball came to him. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, was I was going to come on to uh, the the missed chance by Cyrus Christie earlier on, and I don't know like. Everybody could see, like, all you needed to take was just a touch, just to kind of bring him a bit more into the box. And he definitely would have scored. I don't know what he's doing taking that first time. It was great movement, I think, to get in there, Tiernan. What do you think? Yeah, he closed think him down well, didn't he? It was he? like the Hendrick chance the other night against Denmark. I think we got true, and he might have been thinking, is this too good to be true? Or am I true? Just take the shot, just have confidence in yourself. Like, I think. People say it was a decent shot, but I don't think it was a good shot. It was an easy save for Wayne Hennessy. Straight, Just, straight I think, at the keeper. I think he needed to put it into one of the corners, the top corners or something. Like, have confidence in yourself. Like, you're yeah. play for Fulham in the Premier League and you're starting for Ireland. Have confidence. Yeah, no, I think you're totally right, but the, the fact remains is that, you know, you imagine that that was a midfielder. Maybe not Jeff Hendrick because he probably would have missed like he did the other night. <laughs> but you imagine that that was Connor Hoover in or something like that in that position. You know, you'd imagine that they have a bit more uh, composure from being up there when he obviously scores a lot of goals with Villa and stuff like that. Uh, or Alan Brown and you know, you know, uh, I think you guys were at the game against Celtic and Brown scored, didn't he? Yeah, I think Brown uh, may not start, but I think he should have given him a chance to come on for possibly um, Christian centre mid or maybe. Someone had moved Christy out to the wing and brought him, him on for Hendrick or Arthur or someone because I think he's doing well for Preston in the championship and I think he's a strong player and he's an asset to the Preston squad and I think he could be doing that for Ireland as well if he's given the chance. Mm. Yeah. But just just in regards to our, our plan, like, what did you think of, of the tactics that were deployed? Because I think other than the Christy chance at the first half, I don't really remember us having that many chances. Mm. What do you think, Tiernan? Yeah, we had 10 shots in the game, Wales had 9, but we only had 5 on target, but it didn't really seem like we had that much chances. Like, um, I think you couldn't really argue with the Welsh goal from Harry Wilson. I think it was a good free kick, but Darren Randolph didn't really seem to hear a whistle or anything. He didn't even flinch, he didn't move or anything. So. Yeah, I thought he was definitely a fault for that goal, but at the same time, I think if he's at fault, then Harry Hart is at fault for that silly challenge that he makes. Very silly challenge, yeah. It was just, it was wild and it was reckless. Mm. You know, some some people might say he slipped, but he was going, he was going in to, to try and Absolutely, get that ball. But he was, yeah. he was so late as well. Yeah, I think I think even Wilson's free kick. You know, I've been just, we were discussing it on one of our forums earlier on today, and it wasn't even okay. It went over. It wasn't top corner. It wasn't bottom corner. It was, it was nearly center of the goal. <laughs> Randolph took a left. Step took a step to the left just before it shot. I don't know if you saw that, Tiernan. He took a step to the left just before it was shot, and as you said, Paul, he could have reached his arm out nearly to a degree and and stopped it. It was look, it's unfortunate. Um, we don't know what's going through a player's head or a goalkeeper's head at the time of a free kick. Myself and Tiernan was discussed it last night, and it was as if the Ireland squad didn't hear the whistle because the wall didn't move or flinch, and Randolph stood stood there on the spot, you know. But again, you can go back to to the city challenge. Shouldn't have even been a free kick in the first place. It was a reckless challenge, you know. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, I, I, but for me, it's it's it, the fact that a keeper of his quality should be saved. Now, in my opinion, you're an international standard goalkeeper. I think their keeper would have saved it. Yeah, no, and I think you know what Darren Randolph today is probably kicking himself and he's looking back on it. Everybody has a bad day at the office, so you know you have to put it down to that as well. Just unfortunate that it happened to be for us in in, in Lansdowne, you know. Recently, Darren Randolph, he hasn't been looking up to. He hasn't been looking confident and he hasn't been for, for us or for Middlesbrough for, for us he hasn't been uh, looking like he'll save his shot and every time a shot is taken at him I feel a bit nervous and you know they have Colin Doyle and that uh, lad who plays Norway Sean McDermott I think they should be giving Westwood or Elliot a chance I think and what about though in fairness in Darren Randall's defence it was most definitely going to be 2-0, only for he, he did make a very good save towards the end of the game. You know, and it was one-on-one. -on -one. I think it was more or less one-on-one, -on -one, wasn't he? Yeah, and the I think he squared it to him, didn't he? Uh, yeah. He did make a... Uh, it was a good save with his leg. I think his leg, he stretched out his leg and he did yeah. stop. It was going in if he hadn't... A, it was a good save, to be fair, in that, in, for that particular shot, you know. Yeah. 
yeah, he made up for for that. But after going one 0 down, then O'Neill he, he decides to to he brings on basically all the strikers. Um, I can't really fault him for that. But then it's it's for me then the defense in the midfield that looks lost for me. Like yeah, we were totally exposed in the in the latter half of the game, weren't we? Turn on. We were being, it was a Ho- Hogan McGuire and uh, Shane Long, and it was for Kevin Long, um, McGuire, and uh, Robinson. Robinson, Robinson that, shouldn't yeah. have came off that early. Um, mm. I think once Wells scored, it didn't really look like we were going to get back into the game. The last few minutes, we were having chances, but I think if Robinson was on for those chances, we might have actually got a goal out of it. Yeah, I think he, he looked like a bright spark throughout, and I, I didn't understand yeah. him getting taken off. No one really did. I think he made a huge difference, even in the Denmark game. Um, I really do think that Robinson moved. From the time that he was brought on, um, I think, I don't know, again, turn on how you feel, but I think Shane Long gets far too much criticism. I mean, I don't know what people expect a striker to do when he has three centre halves around him all the time, on his own, with nobody else in space. And when Robinson came on in the, the, the Denmark game, I mean, if you had had him on earlier with Long up front, for someone to play Long to be able to play the ball into when, when the high balls are coming up from time to time. Um, but I, I do think Robinson is a bright spark for the future. What do you think, Taylor? Do you think, would you support that? Well, he's doing well for Preston, five goals in 12 games. But I think him and Long can work well together. I think Long running into the box, Robinson running down the wing, cutting in, getting a few balls into him. Mm. And I think Shane Long gets a lot of criticism, as you said, for um not getting goals but I think he should he's should play more a false nine role and I think he's good in the air, he's strong and he gets fouled a lot for that because he's a target man and mm. for defenders and um I think people don't see that he's fast, he's strong and he gets stopped a lot because of that. Yeah, true. Yeah. For me, though, uh, I thought another person who was a positive was Sean McGuire when he came on. it. Absolutely, yeah. I had other people telling me he, he lost the ball so many times. For me, he looked like the only one who wanted to try and take the ball by the horns and actually try and get a goal. I think the appetite and desire was certainly there with McGuire. Yeah, I think um, if he had someone that was with him constantly, I think that it would have worked well. Maybe like, Robinson, even. Yeah, like if he kept him on. I think McGuire, um, he didn't look the best last night but it's probably because he didn't have someone supporting him every time and I don't think he's played much football though as well this season as no, well. because he is recovering from that injury he's just back and I think he did he did show some good signs last night but I think uh, we're losing when he came on and I think uh, he just didn't really get the show last night yeah well like Obviously, you know, we're, we're, we're lumping balls up. We're just constantly trying to get Shane Duffy on it. Uh, Shane Long was almost like a right winger. And like a, we kind of almost changed our formation to like a 4-3-3 with like McGuire had like a free roll. Hogan was like the out-and-out striker. And then mm. Long was just trying to get balls out the right and kind of whipping them in. Yeah. I'm, I, think I, I think I bang on the money with the Shane Long shot. I, I, I really like Shane Long. I still think he's a lot to offer us, mm. you know. Same way, you know, Walters didn't score a lot of goals for us, but he yeah. still offered a lot for us. You know, he was Absolutely. he's crucial to the way we play and crucial to the way we kind of attack teams. I mm-hmm. do think Shane Long, regardless of the fact that he's not scoring goals or, or that, I do think that he, he provides something that the other strikers, he has that experience, that yeah. know-how. Experience, where, size, strength, speed. There's, he has lots of good qualities, there's no doubt about it. Um, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and like... As you mentioned earlier, then, you know, we're putting so much emphasis on the attack that, you know, it was numerous times we got caught in the break and got got away with it. In the latter half of the game, certainly. Well, look, I mean, only had no choice but to change tact, with, you know, when we went 1 0 down and he, and, he, and he, I think he went 3 in the back at one stage, would that be correct? Well, we started with 3 at the back, but then it went, uh, it was, I think it was a 4 at the back, but it was, it was. Basically, a two, if that makes sense. Yeah, you had we, the wing we backs playing exposed. as. Yeah. yeah. So. But even even the, I don't know again, turning what you would think, like the flow of the football. When we were watching it last night, passing and moving, passing and moving. The Welsh did it quite well. And again, it was relatively very much a youth team that the that the Welsh. Yeah, had I was going to say you know, they, they they had no star players. Then maybe you look at Joe Allen. Maybe that was mm. the star player for them. Other than that, but, the, but their movement on the ball and being able to pass and move, pass and move, and the flow of which they played their game with. Whereas though with ourselves, 
we were constantly resetting and going back and constantly resetting and going back but I don't know the Welsh just seemed to move the ball an awful lot better than what we were able to do uh, w w w with the passing and movement yeah I think uh, it looked like Wilson was uh, basically guiding the team to that win like he did he did get the goal but he looked good throughout the game and you know Joe Allen uh, he was quite dirty but I think he was annoying the midfielders and then he got the balls out to the wing and um, I couldn't really name much of those Welsh players uh, but it's a good uh, youth side I think for the future for them it would be good and I think we were talking about Shane Long a minute ago um, playing that right wing uh, sort of uh, position and I think he looked good getting those nice balls into the centre of the box but we just couldn't get a header away but I think uh, Shane Long he can try new positions like as I said uh, a cam false nine role or a right wing I think he can play in the wing because he is fast and strong to get through as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, Martin O'Neill is known for accommodating players, fitting them in there somewhere in order yeah, to play his favourites. It's a shame Long does seem to be a favour of his, but uh, yeah, obviously Darren Roldoff makes that you know really good save at the end, and then we were clutching at straws then, hoping to get a goal from a corner then towards the end, and it was like, oh please, let us take this corner ref, and you know nothing really came. The Hendrick was. Deliveries on set pieces were very, very poor. I, mean, I don't think I've ever seen him take a set piece for Burnley in my life. Yeah, there was one in particular that went quite low. I mean, we were just on the edge of the outside of the box. Do you remember that one? And he sent it in, but it went in low and just hit the first Welsh yeah, player that it came across. Of, one of the shots went on top of the goal, like it was coming in one of the crosses, yes. and it came over the net and went down. Yeah. Yeah, even McLean's crossing was hopeless. He would get past the first man every time, and it was just yeah. so frustrating. I mean, he was going to take on players and then he was, he'd just be trying to, he looks like he's trying to whip a ball in and it kind of scuffs it and then goes across the box. But yeah. um, he's, he's obviously touched on, you know, Wales bringing people through and, you know, obviously we lose the game, but it just kind of brings me to my next point. Kind of as we're coming to close this, it's like, where do we go from here in, in regards to the management? And, you know, I firmly believe that he won't, Nothing will happen. I, I don't think anything will happen. I think turn on you made a very good point earlier when I heard you speaking about um, it. I think uh, next next month against Northern Ireland and Denmark, I think in that friendly against Northern Ireland, they haven't been looking too good uh, at this time as well. And I think um, that could be a game to get our conference up, but they might get a draw out of us. But I think if we play well against them I think and maybe get a win uh, we can do well against Denmark I have a good feeling about that game How are you, how are you kind of feeling about it? I think that's it's, it's I would have imagined that the Northern Ireland game if O'Neill which I think they will if O'Neill and Keane are there at the time which I think they will it's a must win game you know it, it, it has to turn on you were making a point earlier on that we'll get the um, get the Northern Ireland game out of the way and we, we hopefully get a win out of that take it to Denmark and put it up to them you know we have a bad record over there against them that we were in Copenhagen a sort of draw before the terrible defeat that we had here in Ireland but the um, the Euro qualifiers I think is something that I don't know whether O'Neill is going to try and get better down for and try and make sure that he's still there to try and look at that campaign but I think at this point they both died, they're welcome, in my opinion. I don't know how you feel tearing on about it. It's just, it, it, it just it begs belief <coughs> the fact that they would give uh, these these guys the, the you know extended contract before the exactly. playoff. Yeah. You know, they'll, they'll argue that, oh, well, they got us to the playoff. But if you look at the position we were in, um, we'd beaten Austria out there. McLean, McLean got a vital goal. Right. And we were cruising. Yeah. Uh, in the, I, th I think we were top of the group. Then we go to draw against Serbia, hmm. and we, I think I think the game that really messed us up, and from that point was Georgia away. From that yeah. game, I just I, the I nose just, dived to a degree. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we think we only bet Moldova. We were, I suppose people would say we were unlucky against Austria. Yeah, I think Shane Long had, or Shane Duffy, sorry, had a goal ruled out yeah. for a push, but I don't think it was a push. Hmm. So. You know, there's, there's these things kind of creeping into it. But for me, if you look at the last 
you know, you look at from the Turkey game to the game last night, and yeah. you know, has there been any real positives? I don't think so. I mean, you know, people say, you know, oh, Aiden O'Brien scored a goal. That's been the highlight of yeah. how many games is that now? Yeah. It could be five, maybe six. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've obviously scored in the Celtic game, but that was, you know, that's yeah, it's a it's game tip around really the training match, yeah, basically. Absolutely, yeah. What do you think, Tyrion, on management voice? Where do you think we're going? Well, I think Roy Keane brought some negativity into the side last month, and since that was announced, uh, Ward, uh, the video WhatsApp thing, he hasn't really been back in the squad. I know he was injured as well, but... I think, I think they will keep them uh, Keane and O'Neill on uh, for the qualifiers. I think um, they'll be there for most of the qualifiers, and you know, just it's un- it's unpredictable at the moment. Like people might say it's predictable because we've been losing and drawing and we've been quite boring. But I think uh, I don't really know what to expect at this stage. Yeah, I um, wonder if money if money played no part in it, would the FAI issue P45s tomorrow? But the fact that money is going to play a part in it in order to buy them out of their contracts, you know, if they were to yeah. to ask them to leave, that could obviously play a big part in it too. So it's it's a difficult one to I suppose. Yeah, well, as well as that, wasn't it? The, there was a thing in the the paper I think a month ago saying about you know John Delaney expects to have the debts paid by 2020. So right, right. that might be something that. As you're saying, it might be if they were to look at and did want a management change. change. But then again, you know, we don't know what's going on at that level and whether, you know, both O'Neill and Keane might have full support of the the head honchos. We don't know that, you know, we can only speculate. But something needs to change. So whether it is a mindset of both O'Neill and Keane and the way in which they're they're playing football or they're and the way in which they're coaching and managing the team, or whether it's a management change, one or other is going to have to change because the football that we're playing, I don't think, is suiting our players. Yeah, and I it's think not suiting and people are sorry turn on going. We ahead. really need to qualify for Euro twenty twenty. Yeah. We're hosting a couple of games and if we qualify we'll be playing some games in the Aviva and I think that'd be great for the country and I think we just really need to qualify for that tournament. Mm. Yeah, that's a great point. Um I suppose we leave it there, lads, because we're kinda at a loss here, you know, clutching at straws kinda figuring out what, what do we do so uh, we'd appreciate it if you guys let us know uh, what you thought in the comments a uh, huge shout out to Tiernan and Shane for coming on the show uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button thank you to our sponsors Halfway Cabs if you haven't downloaded their app please do so now the link is in the bio both for Apple and for Android thanks for watching Irish Football Fan TV have a great day if you enjoyed this video hit the subscribe button now and if you never want to miss a video click the bell for alerts For all our other social media platforms, check out this list below. And as always, thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Lack of tactics, really. The lineup was always.